The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Rachel Bonaparte is an associate professor in the Communication Studies program at the Rockville campus. She received her BA at Temple University, MA at Miami University, Masters of Education at Widener University, and Doctorate at Delaware State University in Educational Leadership. Currently, she teaches the COM 108 Foundations of Human Communication, COM 204 Interpersonal Communication, and COM 220 Small Group Communication classes. She recently received the position as the college-wide COM 108-112 coordinator. She is originally from Baltimore, Maryland, and is half Ghanaian on her father's side and half Trinidadian on her mother's side. Rachel has one younger sister who lives in Florida with her two kids. Rachel's parents currently live in Ghana. So for this particular project, I decided to use our small group communication class. Their task was that they were uh, to look at the theme for our class, which was, we the people, the making of a new democracy. The goal was to challenge them to think about what does it mean when the Constitution says, we the people. So, using the actual uh, COM 220 class, which is our small group communication course, the challenge for oftentimes for instructors is trying to make sure that the course is engaging and that we're not just simply using the lecture style. So for this particular class, because the goal for small group communication is to make sure that the students are uh, learning membership roles, leadership roles, and just group communication in general, I, over the few years I've shifted the course from just a regular course to now a service learning type of course. Now with the service learning course, uh, with the Smithsonian as well, trying to infuse in, uh, Smithsonian into the course created its own little task. However, um, there is definitely a need for the active learning, especially within the small group communication. And with this type of project, it allowed the students to take ownership of uh, what they were learning, as well as how they learned the information, obviously within some parameters. So uh, the part of the project, so this project was a semester long project. It is, or it was, um, an accelerated course. So imagine all of these different parts within an accelerated course doing a service learning as well as the Smithsonian. And truth be told, it could be done, because it was. So what we did was I broke down the project into three parts. Obviously, I didn't tell them the extent of the project because it would become overwhelming. So I walked them through piece by piece. The first part of the project was their proposal. In the proposal, they were, uh, we looked at just what does democracy mean, and we looked at it from a historical perspective all the way to the present time. The groups were then uh, created based on the first day of class. So prior to the first day of class, I had, I sent out an email and I asked them, I said, so what cultural group would you be interested in just researching for an entire semester? And they listed their top three, and that is how they got grouped. From there, uh, I grouped them based on their number one choice. The groups came together and they, after discussion in class, they came up with their own definition for how they would define democracy. From there, uh, the semester-long project consists of walking students through Dewey's six-step problem-solving process. Now that is a process that we actually use in all of our communication classes. And in that, it involves um, identifying and analyzing the problem, and you can select any problem normally within the, uh, in the surrounding area, uh, but it's identifying and analyzing the problem, moving into the criteria, meaning that in order to find the best solutions to a problem, you have to have some level of guidelines. Then you start evaluate, I mean, brainstorming the solutions. From there, you evaluate those solutions based on the criteria, the guidelines, and then you select your top three, and then you implement. The beauty of this course is that the students have the chance to actually implement one solution. So it becomes like a competition during the course where they are trying to find and identify some uh, glass level uh, type of solution. And at the end of the semester, they will be able to vote and then the class decides to implement that one solution. So it's a friendly competition. So in the proposal stage, they are not 
fully aware of the entire Dewey six, six step process. They know though the research portion, which is the first step. They are then also, during their pre proposal presentation, they are now also identifying the relevant Smithsonian that's going to connect to that particular topic. Um, and then before they even go to the Smithsonian, they have to now create three SMART goals, making sure that they are specific, measurable, attainable, re realistic, and timely. So that way they're going to the Smithsonian with a purpose. Now, I did create a day that I was going strictly to the um, American History Museum, um, and that was just open for everybody. However, the groups also decided which, which Smithsonian would work for them. Um, part two, so after they've made their proposal, they made an argument as to why this topic was relevant, why it's so important. Um, part two now was basically the implementation of the project. They were then uh, tasked with completing the service learning portion. Now, typically in the past, I allowed the students to cre uh, select their own service learning project according to their topic and what the problem was in the, in the surrounding area. However, time-wise, I had to select the project, and we, are, we all went to um, one of the schools nearby. It's called RICA, and it's the Regional Institutional Institute for Children and Adolescents. So all, as a class, we all participated within this service learning which was uh, creating murals for one of the schools. Um, RICA is a community-based treatment and special educational facility serving students with severe emotional disabilities. The facility is managed by a partnership with Montgomery County Public School System and the Maryland Department of Health. Each student receives instruction through MCPS while also being therapeutically treated by the Department of Health. So from there, we actually went and we, and as you can see, they are, the students were able to create the murals. Um, the students at RICA were the ones that selected what was going to be drawn. And they came up with the quotes and we just did it for them. Um, and so this turned out to be a really great project because it was a nice bonding experience for the group before they continue on with their project, as well as um, it helped, it, for some of the projects, it connected the figure or historical figure connected with their uh, particular topic. So um, we did the service learning project and we did it during one of our class periods. And then um, they also present, present, presented out um, how they implemented, how they were going to implement their SMART goals. They visited their Smithsonian. And part of the uh, second part of the presentation was that they would have to interview someone within the in-group. Say, for example, if your topic was about women, you would select someone within who was a woman, and then um, they also have to select and interview people who were considered on the out group. Um, all of this information, the part that the Smithsonian came in was where it helped to inform the research. So from there, the part three now was the actual presentation, and they finalized everything by creating their individual portfolios. What I would like to do is to walk you through uh, some of the projects. So there were four topics, and the first one uh, was the women's group. The women's group, their title for their group was Get Over It. <laughs> and they, they, this was the women empowerment. Their research question that they came up with was, how can we adjust the, the societal narrative concerning women and inequality in the workforce? They decided to visit the National Museum of American History, and their top solution at the end of the whole process was to create a mock TED Talk to post to a YouTube channel. Now, interestingly enough, this was a group that won. The entire class chose that solution. One of the testimonials that came from it, from that particular group, was the Smithsonian National Museum of American History is a huge museum, and there are a few parts that mention the importance of women, but those few parts were very insightful, because not only did I learn about women through the history of America, but I also got to bond with my group. I learned that without women, America would be very different. I guess I'd be a little bit biased if I didn't say I didn't agree. Um, the next group was the Real Legion. So initially, uh, when I was writing it up on the board, this was a religion group, and this was um, their topic or their title that they wanted to call themselves. The research question was, what can we do to lessen and limit the violence against Jewish people caused by anti-Semitism? 
The interesting thing about this project was that none of them were Jewish, and they, that was the reason why they selected this topic. Uh, they visited two uh, museums. They decided to go above and beyond, and they went to the National Museum of American History as well as the Holocaust Museum. Um, their top solution at the end was a social media campaign that spreads content related to Jewish uh, culture. One of the testimonials included, during our visit at the American History, we saw several exhibits that reflect immigration, religion, and American democracy. After I visited the exhibits, I have realized that this country was built by people from different cultural groups. People from all cultural groups have made great contributions to this country. Therefore, no cultural group should be discriminated against based on race, cultures, national origins, and beliefs. Our next one that we have is, the next group was the Wall Breakers. So, our immigration group. Their research question was, how can we help immigrants have a voice in society at this time? Uh, they also went to two different uh, Smithsonian's, well, they went to two different Smithsonian's for this one, uh, which included the American history as well as the African American history and culture uh, Smithsonian. Their top solution was to set up a forum in the, count, in the county once a month where immigrants can publicly speak with American citizens, elected officials, and among other, um, among each other to find ways that all can prosper. One of the things that I found interesting was their uh, testimonial, which was the Smithsonian trip was a, such a great experience. It was not like my childhood and adolescent trips to the museum. I had a mission and a role to find information for the immigration project and presentation, but I left with even more information than I thought. I felt challenged to do even more than I had planned for the project. I could almost see my story fitting in with the amazing, with other amazing stories in the How Did We Become Us exhibit. How often is it that you hear that a student wants to go above and beyond and you know, do more for a project? So I thought that was quite nice. Um, and then the last group was the Garveys. Nope, can you go back one? So the Garveys group was our African American group. So their research question was, how can we lessen the impact that miseducation of African American history has had on present day? They visited the National uh, Museum of African American History and Culture, and they actually decided to go twice. They wanted to go for a third time. And I told them, you know, I think you got it. <laughs> um, and so the top solution for that group was they wanted to establish a black student union on the Rockville campus. Apparently the other campuses have that group, but not here. So the testimonial uh, was going to the Smithsonian was my favorite experience of the entire course because it was my first time going to the National Museum of African American History. And this was a chance for me to add onto my prior knowledge on African American studies. So I thought that was very nice. Um, so all in all, you have the uh, different projects here, but the goal was to see how their mentality may have shifted from the beginning to the end, where they looked at how they defined democracy in the beginning, and then I wanted to see how their definition may have changed at the end. And so what one of the testimonials that came from it was, um, Democracy to me is still a system of government that gives people the power to vote and make decisions, but only if you fit under that description of what makes you equal will you become will you be considered a valued voice or member of the system. And I thought that was very interesting considering that um, I believe it came from the um, the wall breakers group. So in conclusion, I just want to say thank you to everyone that um, allowed us to participate in this project. Mimi, Denise, uh, Sarah, Philippa, um, and just think in the cohort. Um, I will leave you with this. Although uh, we had, a, it was a very packed class and we had a lot of things that were going on, one, we were able to accomplish it, um, but what was also a success for me is when we started off with 21 students and we only lost one. Oh, wow. <laughs>